And though referred to as the professor of politics, he did face some challenges that taught him a few lessons. The events of Sunday, August the 1st, 1982, shocked not only the entire nation, but also the leadership of the country then, whose grip on power had been challenged. The attempted coup lasted 12 hours. But even as the sun set upon the nation on that day, things had definitely changed for the man who almost lost control of the nation. That is, of course, Daniel Tortich Arab Moy. Leila Mohammed has the details. Twelve hours after the first and only military coup attempt in Kenya, the president's assurance marked perhaps the end of one of the toughest tests of Daniel Arap Moy's presidency. Mimi, nikiwa amirijeshi, la jeshi, la majeshi yetu ya Kenya. Nataka niseme kwamba yale yaliyo tokea Leo asubuhi kwa muda mfupi iliyoletea wananchi wasiwasi mwingi the government overthrow had been planned and executed by the military but it is also loyalists within the same armed forces that had helped the commander in chief then quash that uprising we realized the exercise did not start the first orders it was far much uh, earlier but somehow a lot of people, a lot of uh, the information were taken lightly. Nobody believed it, that uh, an airman or a junior soldier could do things like that. So things were taken slightly lighter. While well, the then Deputy Kenya Army Commander fought off the rebellion within the forces to restore power back to the president, another officer was ensuring that the head of state was secure. <laughs> ni kutoa yeye kutoa yeye kwa nyumba kwa sababu air force hawangeweza kufika huko kwa magari ama kwa migu, ama kwa eh, njia ingine ichapokuwa pengine na ndege na air force kulikuwa na ndege aina mbili kubwa ya, ya vita aina ya F5 ambayo ilikuwa na nyuki na aina ya eh, strike master ambaye walikuwa kisumu. Moja alikuwa anafanya kama adui, mwingine alikuwa kama uh, uh, askari wa Kenya. Kwa hivyo wote hai kuchulikana uh, uh, hali yao. Lakini wananyuki tulijua kwamba walikuwa wameshakamata matega maofisa ambaye ndio wana rusha ndege. Eh, kama marubani walikuwa wameshakamata na kuweka matega pia wale wa isili walikuwa wameshaweka matega wale wa kisumu walikuwa na meja mutai na meja mutai alikata retired veteran broadcaster Leonard Mambo Botella recalls the 6 a.m. events that shook not just the nation but the seat of power i was really scared i was scared stiff this is a Kiswahili service too. They said, yes, are you sure? I said, yes, I've worked here, I know it is. So they told me that they are going to read some statement and that they wanted me to read. Senior Private Hezekiah Ochuka and Sergeant Pankras Oteo Okumu, officers from the Eastley Air Base, stormed the voice of Kenya radio station in central Nairobi and ordered him to make the announcement that the government had been taken. <laughs> Yale yaliyo tokea leo asubuhi shortly after that the officers involved in the coup poured out into the streets as residents caught up in the coup looked on Sumbeyo, a retired lieutenant general in the army knew it was going to be his responsibility to secure the commander in chief we didn't want to to have vehicles that to look you know, conspicuous because we didn't know who is who. So I, I took it, it was a, a three or four uh, bujo. So I went, I went to the soldiers and I said, if anybody stops us, just clear it. And we went and found him, say, and say, found him uh, standing in, in his sitting room. 
The coup was strategically planned to coincide with the war games taking place in Lodwa. For the planners, this would be ideal as most of the army units and the senior leadership were away from the city. The task of staging a counter-attack was therefore left to the senior most officers present at the time. General Mahmoud Mohamed assembled a team of about 30 officers from the 1st Kenya Rifles Battalion and Kahawa Barracks. So I thought the best way is to die as a man or as a soldier. So I asked uh, who, has, who is in communication with Nanyuki. Does, does anybody know whether Nanyuki is hostile or not? And they say it is hostile. So I told him, uh, because of the jets that are in Nanyuki, we are likely to be uh, attacked. So let's get out. He says, I'm not getting out. This is my house. And he says, if, if it is, if it is God's uh, appointed time for me to die, then let me die. And let me die in my house. Mze Moi was eventually prevailed and was secretly moved from his home in Kabarak, Nakuru County to an unknown location. Initially, Sumbaiwo and his team had planned to take the head of state to a place identified as Small Farm, but this changed as they decided to go for a more secure location. Mze wasn't, wasn't perturbed at all. He, he seemed to have had some knowledge of it, of the coup. While that event changed the historical landscape of the country, it also altered Mze Moy's relationship with the intelligence gathering outfits in the country. While he had in the past trusted them, now he was very careful in his interactions with them. Although he did not, he did not, uh, he did not, he did not lose his trust in the military. He, he changed uh, completely in, in the sense that if you uh, are a politician and you brought him information, I came to know this, uh, instead of sending the person to special branch, he would send them to me. I was then, I then been appointed the director of military intelligence. So I thought this was, this was a major departure completely because that's, that was not a system. Sombeyo says the president changed his interactions with even the military intelligence unit. While the masterminds of the coup faced their day in court, with Ochuka eventually falling to the hangman's news, Kenya went into a snap election in 1983. The web of those who would pay for the coup netted civilians, among them Raila Odinga, a university lecturer claimed to have been part of the plot and was charged with treason. It reached a stage where we got in civilians involved and unfortunately we had already prosecuted the, the servicemen who had a knowledge of the coup. We did not have uh, enough witnesses. And so that is when uh, General Mulinga asked me to draft a letter to the president seeking for a, a solution on what to do with this. And the president, uh, I think through his cabinet, uh, decided to detain them. Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, the country's first vice president, was mentioned several times as having financed the organizers. That coup served to only harden the president's grip on power, but it also gave birth to the stirrings of the second liberation that eventually led to the coming of multi-party politics in Kenya. When General Mlinge, because I, I was also very close to General Mlinge, when General Mlinge advised him to revise uh, Section 2A of the Constitution, he, he agreed. He did not agree the first time, but he agreed to change the Constitution into uh, uh, Section 2A of the Constitution. Daniel Toroi Teach Arab Moe's presidency faced opposition even before Mze Jomo Kenyatta passed on. But while he was yet to get comfortable at the house on the hill, the attempted coup in 82 changed him as a man and the president, forcing him to have an even firm grip onto power that saw him comfortably occupy State House for 24 years. While the 1982 coup attempt threatened Daniel Toroi Teach Arab Moe's grip on power, 
He managed to hang on and lead the country for the next 24 years, living in 2002. But even then, he had changed his outlook on life, but also insisting on the legacy of peace, love and unity. Leila Mohammed, NTV, Nairobi.